I grew up in Mauritania. So uh, even before I was aware of my own sexual orientation, I knew what was said about it in, uh, in families and the culture in school. So I knew very early on that it was uh, undesirable to be gay. Um, and I could, from very, very early age, I could hear things like, um, don't share a meal with those people. Um, and then later on, I've seen incidents of uh, violence, so people being attacked and ridiculed on the streets for being gay. So very early on, even before I was aware, I knew that it was an undesirable thing. Coming to the awareness of my sexual orientation it was probably my late, early teens. Um, so again, you just had to keep it silent. So um, you knew it was a bad thing to talk about with family or anyone else, so you just keep it silent. So that's, that's how I, I dealt with it silence and, and dealing with it internally. I was saying earlier that I kept my sexuality to myself, so very few people knew. So I rarely experienced rejection. Uh, but on the other hand, I know that I experienced bullying in school, but I, thinking about it, I think it was because of my gender expression, the, the way I express myself. So for example, I hated football. All the boys liked football and I hated football. So I didn't like doing boyish things and I liked reading books and I was in chasing the girls around the school and so I was bu bullied for that, for being different. And then, But I didn't know it was related to sexual orientation. It's more about my, you know, my, my way of growing up as an adolescent, which, which was very different from other boys. I went to the UN for a job which involved working full time on sexual orientation and gender identity issues and health. Uh, so with my background in public health and my interest in LGBT issues, this was the perfect dream job. So I was extremely fortunate. So it was also the first time that the UN has ever had a full time position uh, at senior level to work on LGBT issues and, and I was the first person to, to do that job so it's tremendous uh, uh, pride personally. A lot of the people from my countries uh, were quite surprised and not always supportive of the kind of work I was doing so um, but on the whole uh, my job was about policy and about health and, and human rights so it did, it did, um, there were points where I really had to explain myself about why I'm doing this job and, I, you know, it's important and, but most people, a lot of people felt, no, it's not important and why is the UN doing this? And, and so it's quite, it can be, it could be quite challenging, um, in some settings, especially when confronted with com compatriots. Um, so that, so that was, that was quite a, a challenge. Quite a lot of people just disapproved and they were not even ready to, to discuss. It's just, um, my family is quite well known and people were like, aren't you worried about what your family is going to say? And, uh, and so they just, the unwillingness to engage basically, or to talk about it. Often closed doors, often no discussions, but I was always trying to explain convince as much as much as I could. It's also interesting uh, that in many cases I I felt that the issue was not me, it was it was just people reacting to just the subject matter. So people have very deep feelings. Uh, so I didn't take it personally always because it's just people reacting to uh, and there's also a lot of ignorance sometimes. So in what people say you can sense lack of knowledge. So the one way of dealing with it is to also bring knowledge to the table and get people to, to say, ah, and then you get them to say, ah, I didn't know this. And, yeah. So discussions can, can have a positive outcome sometimes. It's good for people when they don't know to just acknowledge that they, they don't know. Um, so that makes it sometimes easier to, 
to approach somebody who might be lesbian or gay or just to say, I, I don't understand this, but please explain. And, and just coming from that perspective sometimes helps and makes other people more comfortable to engage. I think Ban Ki-moon does that really well. Uh, he openly said, uh, I'm a middle-aged man. I, I didn't grow up knowing these issues, but now I think I, I've learned a lot. You know, that kind of approach of like starting from a place where you admit not knowing the subject and just helping others to enlighten, to enlighten you. I think that's a good way of starting to engage uh, with lesbian and gay people. I think it's best to know that everybody is different and, and to assume that everybody is different and then just to, to be ready to learn and you know, to start from a place where you just want to learn, want to know. I think that's, that's what I would say. You don't always have all the answers you want by engaging with one person. Because what I realize is that you can talk to three gay men and have three different answers. <laughs> so you may not, it may not solve all your um, questions or, you know, uh, so people are just different. You know? So uh, it's important also to, to take people as people, as individuals. And, and, and that, that perspective uh, is important too, so, so that we avoid generalizing and say, oh, I met this gay person in my office and he said this, and therefore all gay people. Uh, so stereotypes are easy to, to spread. Um, so it's important to, to also realize that there's diversity within, and then people are just individuals, and they express themselves differently, even when we assume that they have the same sexuality.